It's the statistical nightmare that fooled 1,000 PhDs. This scamtacular episode of Scam School brought to you by Squarespace and Gamefly. Welcome to the only class where every graduate gets a complimentary pair of beer goggles. Scam School, the only show dedicated to social engineering at the bar and on the street. I'm your host, Brian Brushwood, and a while back, we asked you guys, what is the most counterintuitive, the most mind-bending statistical paradox that you knew of? And you responded in droves. So we give to you the number one most requested problem, the Monty Hall Paradox. <laughs> Gentlemen, how's it going? I'm Brian. I'm Brad. Brad and John. John, listen, a while ago, I wanted to pose an interesting question about probability and weird statistical anomalies. And I asked people to send in their favorite weird statistical puzzles. And far and away, this was the number one entry that we got. And I looked it up online. This actual weird puzzle appeared in Parade Magazine several years ago, a few decades back and over 10,000 people wrote in to say that the person who wrote the article was completely wrong, including 1,000 PhDs. So what you're about to learn is so bizarre and so counterintuitive and so backwards that 1,000 geniuses weren't able to understand it. Wow. So you two bastards have no hope. <laughs> okay, fair enough. This is a statistical problem called the Monty Hall problem. You guys have seen the show Let's Make a Deal, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So let's do this. Imagine you're playing Let's Make a Deal, the original with Monty Hall, not the newfangled one, right? And in this, they claim that you could win a car. Behind one of the three curtains is a car, right? Right. Behind the other two curtains are goats. And in this case, let's make it real for you guys. I don't have a car to give away, but I'll say that I got 20 bucks. If you okay. guess correctly, I'll give you 20 bucks, right? And the other two, you gotta buy me a beer. So right now, if you're gonna pick one of these curtains, what does your gut tell you the odds are of it being behind any one choice? One out of three. You say one out of three, right? Yeah, because there's three choices. Only one of them has the car or the $20. Right. The other two are goats or you owe me a beer, right? Yeah. So let's do this. Let's play a little game. Who's gonna play? Or do you guys wanna go by consensus? Um, We're gonna do this with John. John, three choices here. Three doors, right? Behind two are goats or you owe me beer. And behind one of them is a $20 bill. Okay. Which one of these doors do you wanna choose? That one. That one. This one right here? That one. All right. Now I could just turn it over and show you what you got. You could. But let's make things a little more interesting. Let's do it. I'm gonna show you what's behind this door right here. There's a goat over here. Now, we could end the game right here. We could just show what's, what's, what's across the board. Because I'm feeling generous, I'm gonna give you a chance. If you want to, you can change or you can stick with the one you got right now. Which one you want? I'll stay. Now, most people do stand. And why is that? Two questions I'm gonna ask you guys. And we're gonna come back after the break and find out which is the right answer. First question is, does it matter if you change or stay the same. At this point, now I have the chance. That's right, because there's only two choices. It's either this one or this one. It's right. the chance, you picked it, you're there. Second question, what are the odds that you'll win both if you stay on the same one or if you change to the other one? Now, you just said you thought the 50, odds 50? were 50 50 across the board. And you know what? Just about everyone agrees with you, but we're going to find out after the break why you are absolutely wrong. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you being wrong. <laughs> Let's talk about Squarespace because it's finally here, the Squarespace iPhone app, and it is freaking gorgeous. You can manage your entire Squarespace site on the go, post and edit blog entries, you can upload pictures on the fly, manage your content, preview your updates, access your site statistics, and it's all seamlessly integrated with your iPhone. I'm telling you, you don't even need a computer anymore. You can blog from the bar and claim you're working and kind of be telling the truth. Now here's the thing, you know everybody's moving over to Squarespace. It's no secret, they've got the best system around and everybody knows it. The only question is, whose promo code are you going to use when you sign up? Whose promo code is going to get you 10% off the lifetime of your order? And most importantly, whose promo code will keep you swimming in free drinks? It's gotta be promo code scam school. all one word. Head on over there, sign up now, make America proud. Make your mom proud. Hell, make me proud. 
All right, now for the shocking truth. Just about everyone who sees this problem thinks exactly the way you did, John, but the truth could not be any more opposite, and here's why. You picked this one right over here, right. and then I revealed that this one was a goat, and I offered you a chance to change, and you declined. Right. Most people decline because it's very agonizing to make a decision, and once people make a decision, they tend to always want to stick with it, right? And that's, that's the way, for example, that they call it the puppy dog clothes with, uh, with, with art pieces or furniture. They say, just take it home, use it for a week, and if you want to bring it back, you can, otherwise we'll bill you, right? It's very psychologically difficult to take back a decision once you make it. Right. So that's one thing going against you. Second thing going against you is, weirdly enough, when you pick one of them, Let's, uh, first of all, let's just see what would have happened, right? You picked this one, we revealed this one, you said you didn't want to change, and then the truth is, the 20 bucks, the car, was this one right in the middle, and you actually picked a go. But there's two reasons I was going against you. One was statistical, one was psychological. Psychological, we've already talked about. Let's talk about the statistical reasons. Look at it this way. Instead of looking at, right now, what are the odds that the one you'll pick will be the car? Uh, one in three. One in three. Let's flip it upside down. What are the odds that you'll pick a goat? Two out of three. Thank you. Three. Thank you. Yes, I was a little bit worried Thank there for a second. second. <laughs> the odds are much like, so, so you have to assume whatever you pick is probably a goat. Right? right? Right. So you probably have your hand on you a goat. You have a better chance of picking a goat then. You probably have your finger on a goat. Right. And then what do I do? I show you one of the other cards and I reveal the other goat. So knowing that you probably, there's a two-thirds chance that you pick the goat, then the odds are that that this card, there's a two-thirds chance that this card is the card that I have to buy. The card, the twenty dollars, right? So believe it or not, not only should you always switch, but if you do switch as a policy, your odds are two-thirds, sixty-six percent of the time, that you will win. Does that really? make sense? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So I tell you what. If you decide that you're always gonna switch when you can, there's only three ways that everything can run out, okay? So let's imagine that you start with this one. Right. I reveal this one, and we always decide that we're going to switch. switch. So that means we switch to this one, and we reveal that this one is a goat, and that you now have the winner. I can't even throw the cards down, right? <laughs> All right, so that's one out of three, right? What's the second possibility? Second policy possibility is you start here, I reveal this one, and then you switch, and it turns out that this was the car, and that was the goat. Right. So that means we have one to one. Third possibility is you start with this one, I reveal that this one's the goat, you switch because we decided we will always switch, and it turns out that you get the car. So hard numbers, two out of three times, if you decide to always switch, you will always get the car. At this point, we've explored all three possibilities. So you know for a fact that two out of three times, as long as you always switch, you'll win, which is one of the most weird, counterintuitive things in the world. But you guys were freaking fantastic. This thing blew my mind. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Cheers. The Monty Hall problem. Oh. Statistics for the win. All right, let's talk about Gamefly. You like games, I like games, and Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service that offers you a choice from over 6,000 new and classic titles from all consoles and handhelds. They got plans starting at $15.95 a month, and members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them as long as you like, with no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, just send it back and Gamefly will send you the next one. And if you really like the game you're playing, just click on Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. The best part is Scam School fans get a free two-week trial when you go to Gamefly.com slash Scam School. That's Gamefly.com slash Scam School. It's completely free. It's as good as winning a free drink. Get on over there. All right, guys. Now, that was some interesting academia, but we got one that's nice and practical for you two bastards. Here's the thing. How many heads, Bradley, do you see on that dollar bill? Look all over. Count how many heads you see. Count them. Count them. You can pick up the dollar bill to look you at it. I intend to. If you <laughs> Are you sure it's not going to burst into flames? <laughs> Dude, do you have a dollar bill? Pull out a dollar uh, bill. Take a I look might, at it. I might. Surely you got a dollar bill. I hope. I'll even give you the first one. It's I'm George Washington. Two. Off the top of my head. You think two? Get it? 
off the top of my head. <laughs> oh! uh, that was funny. Yeah, that's it. Scam School, you're home for puns. <laughs> and you know what? I'm even going to give you the answer. You ready for this? Yeah. You say two. How many heads do you see? Two. You see two? Yes. I'm going to tell you the answer is 14. 14? There are 14 heads on a dollar bill. If you find them all, I'll buy you a drink. If not, I will reveal the answer for a modest sum. Oh, I feel like you're being very liberal in your interpretation of the word head. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, that's what I think too. Screw you both then. Um, <laughs> one. Uh, I see the, the eagle has a head. The eagle does have a head. That is one of the uh, 12 of the 14. Washington has a head. Washington has a head. That There's is no two of the 14. On a dollar bill. You got 14. You got two out of 14, man. No, Only 12 there, to there go. Really no watermark. Um, two out of 14? 14, dude. Me. They're all over the place. You're messing with me at this point. Head. I give up. The arrows. The heads of the arrows. Oh, What's arrow, that? What? Arrow what? Heads. Oh, you bastards. No way. I owe you two a beer because, yes. Bring it. There's George Washington's head. Oh. There's the eagle's head. And there are 12 arrow heads. Oh, you. Oh, <laughs> Holy crap, that's awesome. You guys beat the dealer up here to each of you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Oh, Very good you. job. <laughs> The nice thing about the Monty Hall Paradox is you can actually perform it for your friends. More often than not, they're gonna make the wrong decision. If you're worried about losing, then just go ahead and make it an intellectual exercise to show your expertise. And yes, before you guys post it in the forums, I am aware that it was exposed in the movie 21, which was a great flick, but what I wanna hear is about your success stories and failure stories. So post them at the boards at scamschool.tv where you can see all of our episodes right back to episode one. If you want to suggest your favorite bar scam, hit me up at brian at revision3.com. If you're doing the Twitter thing, you can follow the show at twitter.com slash scam school or find out when I am in your hometown, usually hosting a spontaneous meetup at twitter.com slash wood. Next week, we're going to be learning from a technology expert how to build an iPhone killer using three donuts and a prostitute. But for now, I got to get back to the bar.